Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And I think it's fair to say that we've already established quite well the fact that Skyrim's a pretty big game. But while The Elder Scrolls V is definitely large in its scale and scope, every game and every playable world must have some limitations. Well, okay, maybe not every game, but you get the idea. Skyrim may have a massive map, but it's not necessarily infinite. And if you go too far in one direction, or just say, try to leave Skyrim, you're bound to hit an invisible wall or some unscalable mountain range or set of barriers that prevent the Dragonborn from passing any further. However, thanks to the magical thing called console commands and a few bugs, we can manage to break through these barriers and inspect what the world looks like and see places that we were never supposed to. As it turns out, just because these areas are normally inaccessible doesn't mean that Bethesda wasn't all too happy to pepper them with some insane detail. So for today's video, I've prepared a list of some of my absolute favorite secrets Bethesda hid outside of Skyrim's playable world space and levels. Sit back and relax as we take a look at five of the most fascinating out-of-the-map details in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, we'll begin today's video with something quite small, literally, and not necessarily out of the map in the way you might be thinking, but still a neat little item tucked away in what absolutely should be an inaccessible area. When inside the city of Whiterun, if one approaches and looks into the well within the market district, it seems like it leads to your typical long, dark, damp tunnel, as a well should. But, if we decide to follow it down with the use of the right console commands, we'll eventually arrive at the well's, well, bottom, and discover that hidden there, away from the prying eyes of ordinary players, is a golden ring, just kind of floating in space. This could be a nod by the developers to, well, anything really. Maybe they're trying to reference the movie The Ring, Whiterun as a city was heavily influenced by Adorus, a city in the Lord of the Rings. Perhaps the devs placed the ring there with that in mind. Maybe someone on the team just thought it would be cool to place an object like that down here for funsies, with no more thought than that. However this expensive little piece of jewelry found its way down here, it matters not, and we may never know. But chances are it won't be finding its way back to an owner anytime soon. Next on our list, Skuldafin is a large, ancient Nordic ruin buried deep in the Velothi Mountains, and is notably being used as a fortress and base of operations by Alduin for his attempted conquest of Skyrim. We can only visit this location during the quest The World Eater's Ire, at the climax of the Elder Scrolls V's main questline. The interesting thing about Skuldafin, though, at least for the purposes of this video, is that if you use console commands to exit its playable boundaries, you'll realize that the region is entirely surrounded by a boundless sea of shallow water that quite literally never ends. The game will just keep generating more and more terrain and sea the further and further you go. This place is effectively an island. Bethesda gave the Skuldafin area not just its own level and cell, but its own world space. And players who do decide to venture into this bizarre, ankle-deep ocean will also find all sorts of weird curiosities. As you wander, it's possible to stumble upon large towers of terrain just stretching into the sky for no apparent reason, half-developed houses, floating structures, and even sunken villages not to mention sporadic dragons who will attack you. Bethesda had apparently used the inaccessible bits of the Skuldafin world space as a place to test the implementation of all sorts of assets, and just never bothered to remove them, probably figuring that no one would find this place anyway, and it wouldn't matter if we did. Most of the misplaced models and structures will lie rather close to the playable Skuldafin world space itself. But if you want, you're free to just run off in any direction you please for as long as you'd like. Again, the game will just keep on generating space for you to run. Depending on what mods you have installed, it's also quite likely that you'll find even more weird floating buildings in this region, as many mod authors have taken to using Skuldafin's area for testing purposes too, 
and just not deleting the abnormalities they leave behind, making the place all the more crowded. Overall, the shallow seas of Skuldafin represent one of the most unique environments players can ever visit, even by the standards of what console commands let us get away with. Coming in at number 3, the quest, The Mind of Madness, will send the Dovahkin to the Mind of Pelagius, a mysterious supernatural realm based on the mind of Pelagius Septim, a former Mad Emperor of Tamriel. It is here we will meet with Shiagorath, Daedric Prince of Insanity, and seemingly the ruler slash creator of this strange dimension and he'll force us to partake in all sorts of ludicrous tasks in order for him to let us go. It's a real fun mission. But did you know that if you no-clip past the invisible barriers on the western, I think, edges of this region and just start ruffling off through the fog, it's possible to find a doorway just sitting in the middle of what should be a totally inaccessible area. If approached, the doorway will claim to lead to, quote, the mind of a madman. And if you open it, sure enough, your character will be greeted with a loading screen, and end up in a totally new, seemingly uncompleted level. You'll spawn inside of a house, but a quick look around the area with the free camera will reveal that this house is in fact on top of a large ancient Nord table of all things. Wait, what? Furthermore, there's a door in the home which will send you to a large, long hallway when opened that leads to pretty much nowhere. What is this place? Well, we don't know for sure. However, more than likely, what we're staring at is what remains of cut content. A level Bethesda was in the process of designing, likely to be used in some way during Shiagorath's quest, that they ultimately just discontinued and decided not to use. Why they left a random door leading to this room in the middle of an inaccessible field, however, is something we're far less certain of. Maybe they had it here for testing purposes and just forgot to remove it? Or maybe some dev intentionally left it behind for us console command users to find. Whatever the case, the mind of Pelagius is truly a mad place in more ways than just one. For fourth spot, We've got a bit of a two-for-one, as both of these secrets kind of share a theme, and they're probably among the most well-known of this video. But if the player decides to noclip through the game's southern Gerald Mountains, you'll find that Bethesda created a small, low-polygon model of the White Gold Tower, and the island of which the Imperial City sits right about where Cyrodiil should be in relation to Skyrim. As you approach the tower, its appearance will become sort of, well, inconsistent, as the model constantly flickers, flashes, and just disappears depending on the angle you view it from. Furthermore, if you decide to take your character far beyond the map's traditional northeastern border, you'll eventually find a surprisingly two-scale, low-texture terrain map of Morrowind, Vardenfell, and the Red Mountain, all right about where they're supposed to be, according to Tamriel's geography. So, in some technical sense, the lands of Cyrodiil and Morrowind, the settings of the two previous Elder Scrolls games, are featured in Skyrim, just not quite as detailed as we remember them. Now, the developers actually seem to have had a very good reason for including these low-resolution regions, beyond just giving console commands users some additional satisfaction. They're meant mostly to be seen from the game's overhead world map. When you access the map and head just about as far south as you can, sometimes it's possible to see the White Gold Tower from there. Likewise, going as far northeast as the camera will allow you to can let you see Mount Vardenfell and Morrowind too. Because Skyrim's world map borrows from the game's real-time physical one, Bethesda needed to bake those landmarks into the game's terrain if they wanted them to be visible. So yeah, that's why it's technically possible to run all the way from the Imperial City to the Red Mountain in the same game, even if your entire experience won't be the most consistent or immersive one. And finally, last on our list, we're heading back to Skyrim's Southern Mountains. Specifically, an area right around Angie's Camp, 
in the frozen highlands of South Falkreath. Here, on what is a normally unreachable cliffside, located above the campsite, something really random can be spotted. A pair of two crates lie awkwardly stacked upon one another, and beneath them sits a copy of the sneak skill book, Three Thieves, which tells the story of Three Thieves, and some rather spooky shenanigans they get themselves into. But that's about it. Just two crates randomly stacked upon each other, and a book under them, seemingly in the middle of nowhere in this inaccessible location. We don't have any idea what Bethesda was thinking when they put this all here. It is worth noting that in the southern holds of Skyrim, specifically the Rift and Falkreath, there is this weird sort of phenomenon where books are just randomly peppered in these really rural and unnatural locations for seemingly no reason at all. Like, we don't know if there's some weird grand bookkeeping librarian conspiracy to just litter books everywhere, or if Bethesda just kind of did this by accident. But it's possible that this Three Thieves book's location could be in connection with that. Though, again, we don't even know much about the whole phenomenon to begin with. There's no final lesson here. There seems to be absolutely no purpose behind this scene. And, yeah, nothing makes any sense at all. What a wonderful note to end this video on. But, nonetheless, with that we are going to wrap up. My top 5 hidden, out of the map secrets in, or I suppose, outside of, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Thanks for stopping by everybody. Which of these curiosities did you find to be the most impressive? Have you taken upon yourself to explore what lies beyond the developer's boundaries? Leave a comment down below. I had an absolute blast making this video, and really hope I get to make another one. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. A huge thank you to patrons and channel members for all your help, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.